Now, back to our program. From the very beginning, Walt Disney Studios set out to charm families everywhere with a special blend of holiday entertainment. In a historical perspective, there are really two kinds of movies that Walt Disney himself uh, made. There were classic fairy tales, Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella are, are great examples of it. And then there was classic literature that was adapted to a contemporary setting of which 101 Dalmatians and Lady and the Tramp, I think, are great examples. Oliver and Company continues that tradition. Dickens, a classic piece of literature set in a contemporary time. With the talents of Bette Midler, Huey Lewis, Cheech Marin, Ruth Pointer, and Billy Joel as the Artful Dodger, we have magic. What I tell you guys, Dodger can really pick them. Oliver, Billy Joel's voice was recorded long before any of the drawings were made of Dodger. But that voice then is, is laid out for the artist in terms of how many frames each syllable takes for him to say. And he then puts his own acting ability somehow out through his hand and that pencil onto that piece of paper. And those drawings become a character that really do come to life. Check it out, Tito. Hey, man, if this is torture... <laughs> Chain me to the wall. It's my dream come true. I'm, I'm finally validated. I, I, I can uh, be in something that my kid can watch every day. Ooh, I think she likes me, man. It's a really strange metamorphosis that the, the, all of a sudden the image will conform to the voice. The character starts looking a little bit like you would if you were a chihuahua. That does it, man. You insulted my pride, man. This means death. Let me tell you, Rita, it was tough. Rita is cute and spunky and sassy. I think they picked the right person to sing Rita's song. I mean, you know, Rita could do a neutron dance if you wanted to. Now listen up, you got a lot to learn. And if you don't learn, you don't hear. But if you're tough and always use your head, you'll be right at home on the street. Well, it takes about four years to make an animated film, so that's for starters. The first two years, more or less, are going to be spent with the story, refining it, creating characters to play it out. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Ignacio Alonso Julio Federico de Tito. Get away from me, you little bug-eyed creep. My name is Francis. Francis. Not Frank. Not Frankie. Francis. First of all, you need great artists clearly, and a great story. So given that you've got a great artist and a great story, now comes the complicated part, which is the actual frame-by-frame frame drawing of every single frame of the movie. The most difficult thing about animation is not the technical ability of, of making it move, but it's working together as a team. Now, Oliver and Company is a film that we made. It was about 300 artists that were working on it together. And that's the difficult thing with animation. It has to look like it's been done by one person. We had to learn how an animal moves. We had to study anatomy. We got dogs in here. I think we got a great effect on the screen of believability and, and movement of the animals and their personalities. Could I see you for a moment privately? Frankie, get down, right? All right, kid. We always look to be able to do something uh, in animation that you really can't do in live action. The animators really want to achieve a reality that could never be achieved in any other kind of presentation. <gasps> Tito, you dance divinely. Walt Disney was a pioneer. And every movie he made was, in sometimes, in some sense, trying to push the boundaries of animation one step further. I think Oliver is in that same style. It is trying to find new ways of telling a story. Picture the city, 8th and Broadway. The crowds hustling, the traffic roaring, the hot dogs are sizzling. I love a story with food in it. There is no better way in the world to tell a great story than through great characters. And great characters come to life with great actors. Bette Midler is simply the most versatile talent in the whole wide world. And she's a great singer, and she's a great actress, and she's now even a great poodle. On arrival, on arrival, I'm beauty unleashed. Yeah, jaws are up, hearts stop, so classic and classy, we're not talking lassie. 
I think Oliver and company, the music is especially strong, and we have some of the most gifted artists who've lent their talents to it. Now it's always once upon a time in New York City. It's a big old battle, tough old town, it's true. But beginnings are contagious there. They're always setting stages there. They're always turning pages there for you. So I'll never don't be shy. Get out there and go and try. Believe in that you're the guy. They're dying to see. With Oliver, it's an amusement park ride. It just races through and it's a lot of fun the characters are real and fresh and by the end of it you feel exhilarated and you want to kind of go on and again it's our intent and our commitment to do a new film every year from this point on this is roughly equal to the output of the studio in the late 30s we've never done that much since then and we are now committed to doing that again these movies are really for us, the ambassadors of goodwill. This film will go out to every uh, county and every city and every town, not just through America, but through the world. Well, these movies are the heart and soul of our company. Absolutely, positively. With the release of Oliver and Company, the Walt Disney Studios have renewed their commitment to continue classic Disney animation and great family entertainment. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, yeah. The magical.